Hey everyone, Jessica Coulter here, and today we're going to be talking about memory and uh, three activities you or your child could do to increase your retention and uh, help you guys get better grades in classes. So we will be talking about things specifically for school, but these activities would also be great for, you know, mem remembering other things. So if you would like to increase your memory or maybe you or your child is, uh, you know, constantly struggling with uh, remembering something from, you know, the time of the first lesson to the test or maybe the final, let me know this message is relevant to you. Tap that like or heart button for me. And I uh, just want to introduce myself in case you just happen upon this video or we haven't met each other yet. My name is, again, Jessica Coulter, and I am the CEO and founder of Ace Cookie Tutoring. I help students with the ACT, middle school math, and proofreading. Those are my three specialties, but I do help students with a variety of subjects in the fourth grade and beyond up through adults in grad school. So if, uh, you know, like today, memory is something you're struggling with, or maybe, you know, study goals in general, I would love to talk to you. So just feel free to send me a message or, uh, you know, go to my business page, which is where you're watching this video at probably and uh, send me a message. So now that uh, we all know what we're here for and uh, who I am, now I can start helping you guys. So the first tip I want to give you about increasing your retention is to teach someone else the skill. So if we're talking about school, this means that uh, your kiddo goes through a lesson, gets the hang of it, it's doing great, but uh, his buddy in class isn't doing so well. Well, if your child teaches the skill, you know, he learned in math, to his friend, then he is himself relearning the skill. And by teaching others, you are going to remember and really understand that new skill better. It's the same thing if you're at home, you know, mom or dad or, you know, an adult, you know, listening to this. If you're at home and you try out a new recipe and then you go over to a friend's house and uh, you're like, you know, I made this great recipe the other day. You know, I think you might be interested in it, and so you make it together, or you tell him or her about it. You know, you tell your friend about the recipe. Well, by rehashing, basically, what you learned, you know, this worked, this didn't work, or this is where I struggled, then you're really going to remember that recipe. So, same difference between a math class or, you know, sharing recipes. The idea of teaching someone else what you've learned is really going to help you understand it, and it's going to stick around your memory better than if you just learned it, understood it, and moved on. So I'm hoping, you know, this is helping. You know, I hope that's an idea you can latch onto. If it is, great. And uh, do know I have all sorts of great study tips and uh, tutorials and educational resources available in my Facebook group. And uh, join my group that's called Students Aiming for A's. All you've got to do is tap the uh, link in the description, and that description should be somewhere off to the side of the video or maybe down below. So join the group, get your hands on all those freebies that I am constantly giving group members and would love to talk to you and learn how I can help you or your kiddos with school or maybe, you know, some professional writing services or something maybe, you know, more in the work field instead of the school field. So I've got two more tips for you and the second one is make a game. So. This again could go school or you know even a road trip. So for school, when I say make a game, what I mean is, and you know, your kiddo has probably done this, or if he or she hasn't yet, it's probably upcoming. Because I know as a substitute teacher, I uh, was there in a history class one day, and they were making board games. So by making a board game that uh, features, you know, trivia cards is a very simple way of doing that. You know, you have to answer a question and then you get a couple choices or maybe it's just a you know open-ended question when you create a board game that is going to help you or your child learn the material better because you're going to be refreshing your memory you're going to have to make sure you actually understood the material well enough or go look up material you might need to refresh or on in order to create those questions for the game pieces and then actually playing the game is going to require you to test your knowledge, you know, test your trivia. So there are all sorts of different board games that can be made. You know, just think of some of the simpler ones if you want, you know, shoots and ladders, Candyland, whatever, 
or make it more complicated. You know, you could do like cranium and have to draw and act and answer factoids, all that good stuff. So that is one example. And then outside of school, a way to increase your memory when it comes to board games, I'm thinking about one of my family's favorite games, and that is I'm going on a picnic game. So it's one of the games we always play on a road trip. And so what happens is you kind of go in a roundabout and the first person says, I'm going on a picnic and I'm bringing blank. And the next person has to say, I'm going on a picnic and I'm bringing what the first person said. And then the second person adds and it just keeps going and going. So I've done that and again, as a substitute, I had an unruly band class and uh, gave us a chance to learn about each other. I had the classmates talk about why they joined band and we did the same thing and we just loved it. I mean, it was a lot of fun. We had about 20 kids and so we had 20 different reasons for joining band and it got even harder when we had repeats. So if this is something you've played before or you have a great memory trick of your own, awesome. I'd love to hear about it. Just leave me a comment below and uh, if you are enjoying the video, even better, tap that like or heart button for me. So I do have one more tip of my own I wanna share. We'll see if it's one that you've used before. And uh, this one is cross excuse me, cross curricular activities. Try to say that 10 times fast, right? <laughs> so I'm thinking on this one. Say you're in English class and you're reading a book. One of my family members absolutely loves the Titanic. And so she's taught the book A Night to Remember more than once. And uh, a great cross-curricular activity for that particular book is to do some experiments. So the Titanic, uh, people end up in the water. In the ocean, it's very cold. And so she had some of her kiddos see how long they could hold their hands under water. You know, she made sure it was the right temperature as the ocean that they talked about in the book. There's also the idea of the boat and uh, knowing only so many people could fit in it. So discussing, you know, who in their class could fit, who would they keep, who would they leave behind, and the reasons why. So when you really kind of dive deep and analyze a book, you know, you're learning how to read, you're learning what's happening, you're getting history, so there's cross-curricular already in the book itself, and then when you add in the science, it gives the kiddos yet another way to process the book. So this can happen with other fields of study as well. I was thinking that for math, you could write a story. I was telling that to one of my friends right before the video, and he's like, you're gonna have to explain that to him. So um, in case that is, you know, as weird to you as it was to him, then what my thought process is, you learn, you know, I'm thinking, we talked about Pythagorean theorem in one of my previous videos, so definitely go back and watch that if that's something you know you've struggled with or you know someone who is. Um, but uh, Pythagorean theorem, you learn that in math class, you could then write a story about how, you know, a builder uses that and again, you know, write it out in story format and maybe have to include how he or she learned the theorem, what it means, how to implement it. So by actually writing out sentences, we're going into English, which is, you know, different class, different curriculum than math, but it's going to reinforce it again because you are taking something you know from one class and then you're using that knowledge with a kind of different method. So I hope that makes sense. So those are the three tips I want to give you guys for increasing your attention. I'm going to try to give you examples for both school and, you know, outside of school, depending on where you are in life or your family is. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I would love to get you more tips, more resources. All you got to do is join my group. So join my Facebook group, Students Aiming for A's, go to the link in the description so you can get those educational resources. And uh, I look forward to helping you guys earn A's on your papers, earn A's in your classes, and get the ACT score you want. So thank you so much. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.